you're listening to the Today's Mama podcast with your host, Rachel Hersher. Welcome to episode eight. Listen, if you listen to episode seven, you heard me talk about my first day of school, middle of the street, crying meltdown. I just want to assure you that I've fully recovered and fully embraced high school life this week. There's been a hello day stomp, a football game, driver's ed, all the things, and we're all okay. So with that good news, I've pulled together a couple other bits of good news for you that came this week. So first, the FDA finally approved a generic EpiPen. So can I get an amen and a hallelujah? We've got allergies at our house. I've got EpiPen stashed in cupboards and purses, all the strategic places. Uh, Mylan, the drug manufacturer, has kept a pretty tight grip on the EpiPen market, and they have raised the price of EpiPens more than six times since buying it in 2007. Gross. So good news for all of you families that have got kids with allergies in your household. Sounds like prices should be going down. And then the other big piece, if you haven't heard this yet, Harry Potter is coming back to theaters from August 31st to September 6th. This is in Cinemark Theaters. You can't miss this. You can get tickets to each individual movie for $5 each or purchase a $25 pass for the entire week-long event, which includes some collectible swag, like a keychain, <laughs> refillable soda cup, and a sweet, sweet badge worth every shiny sickle if you ask any wizard worth his wand. Now, if you are also a super fan, I expect you to be dressing up like the good old days. Who remembers when the movies first came out? I'd like to say I dressed up, but if I could get a time turner, I would go back and I would be there dressed as Hermione Granger, okay? So yeah, there are some silver linings to my otherwise over-emotional start to the school year. You can read those stories and more over on todaysmama.com. You're listening to the Today's Mama podcast with your host, Rachel Hersher. We'll be back right after this. Ever worry that all your kids are doing with their friends is showing each other videos on YouTube or Snapchatting each other whilst they are literally sitting right next to each other? Ever wish you could manage your kids' devices wherever they went? Well, Circle Go makes that possible. Circle Go takes all those settings on your kids' devices that they have at home and extends them to 4G, LTE, and any other Wi-Fi networks they join. Filters and time limits apply anywhere and everywhere, even for apps like Snapchat, Instagram, and YouTube. How, you ask? Find out more at meetcircle.com. And now back to the Today's Mama podcast with your host, Rachel Hersher. Part one of this screen time series focused on shared vision, both figurative and literal, setting goals and being totally transparent with privacy. If you haven't listened to that episode yet, please hit pause on this one and go back and start with part one. This little series that I'm playing with is all about helping you reset your thinking and relationship with technology, and each of these pieces should build on each other. In this episode, part two, we're going to talk about defining the purpose of each device and how to create an environment that reinforces your goals. So for me, part of the problem is that all our devices do all the things. Music, movies, games, browsing the internet, making phone calls. It's all possible from practically every device that's all in our hands. It's too much, too many options, too many things. If you want to cut back on cookies, you need to quit stashing cookies everywhere, right? Your purse, your nightstand, your entertainment center, your car, everywhere you turn, everywhere I turn, cookies. I don't want to demonize cookies because let's be honest, cookies are good. It's just when you've had too many and you've surrounded yourself with them. Then it's time to design a better environment where maybe you put your cookies on the top shelf or you don't buy so many or you take them out of the house entirely and take a break so that you can get the sugar out of your system. Here's what we did at our house to reorganize our environment and give technology a better place. 
The first thing we're going to do is start by taking an inventory of all the devices and technology in your house. Phones, tablets, TVs, gaming systems, your digital servants like Alexa and Siri, everything. Pile them up and make a list. Write down every single device you own. Next to each device, make a list of the things that you love about them. I want to start on a positive emotion. I really, really don't want to demonize all these things in our life because they have a place. What does this device, this app, this service, what does it do for you or for your kids? What value does it bring to your lives? What's fun? Who can you connect with? What good does it do? Because there are great things. You know, Instagram is fantastic, especially for my grandmother, because she's able to keep touch with everybody that she doesn't see so much. I actually have a great place in my heart for video games. My son, in the fourth grade, we gave him FIFA 13, and he didn't really have a sport, but FIFA 13 helped him learn soccer. He learned the players, the rules, loved the game, and that was something that pushed him to try out for a soccer team the following year. So I could really take that video game and find a real world benefit from it. Look at your list like that. What are the real world benefits that come from these devices? Now grab another piece of paper, make that same list, and let's talk about what the downside is. What are the negative effects of these devices and the apps and content stored on them? How is it taking from your life? What happens when we use them too much? What problems do they cause? Talk about it. There's good, there's bad. We want our technology to work for us. For me, I want my technology to save me time, money, and enhance my real world experiences, not take from them. I feel the same way for my kids. So let's carefully consider what these devices should really be doing for us as parents and for our kids. And now let's give those devices a job. Yes, let's literally make them work for us and do specific things for us. It's time for one more list. Get another piece of paper, list those devices one more time. Now we're gonna go through and give each of them their job, a singular job or purpose where possible. So let's start with phones. What is a phone for? This one is so obvious, but it's the one we've messed up the most. So at our house, we've decided a phone is for communication. That means phone calls and texting. That's the phone's primary job. We've also decided that a phone can be used as a utility. So we've got stuff like calculators and maps. Of course, I've got Venmo. We've also left music, podcasts, and Audible on our phones. As a parent, I think those are really valuable. It's something that my kids can enjoy. And podcasts are a thing that I assign my kids all the time. I want it to be convenient. I want it to be portable. What's not on the phone? Social media, YouTube, games, all that distraction and fluff. Gone. Absolutely gone. What's left? A phone and some utilities. You might be asking where all that other stuff goes. I'm not a big fan of most social media for kids, period. And when I say kids, I'm talking teenagers too. The only thing my kids have is Instagram. And the only way they can access it is from my phone. This does a couple things for us. It takes the distraction from their hands and makes them put a little bit of extra effort to access their social media, which again is on one platform or one app, Instagram. It makes them take extra time, in all caps, time, before they choose to post something as a photo or a story. Because remember, they've got to come to me to log in through my phone. They've got to probably show me what photo they're going to post and have had some time to think through that. Do I really want to do it? What am I going to say? You know, it's taken some thinking. So remember that shared vision philosophy we talked about in the last episode? Yep, I've got full access. We can review friend requests together and I've got opportunities to start conversations because they come through me. Okay, but what about their friends? This is one of the biggest stumbling blocks for some parents. They say, but all of my kids' friends are using Instagram to communicate. This is how they communicate or Snapchat or whatever it is. So, mean mom here. Again, I yell through the speaker, you are the parent. I don't care. Let your kids work to form friendships with people they actually have to speak to. I don't think my kids need 10 different ways to digitally communicate with their friends. Texting is just fine. 
So let them do a little extra work. Let them build those extra social skills. Let them seek friends and engage with people and develop those communication skills. Here's the best part. You'd think my kids would be asking me all of the time to get on Instagram. Every day, all day, right? Nope. Once I took Instagram from their phones, which is an app that they were on daily, their usage dropped dramatically, right? Because it's not on their phone. So how much did they ask me on my phone? Maybe twice a month is when they come to me to ask to get on Instagram. And once they log on, they stay for maybe 10 or 15 minutes and then they're done. I don't even have to urge them to be done. They say they're done. And I think the difference is they realize now how they feel when they get on Instagram. This is the biggest thing they have specifically thanked me for. When you are constantly scrolling through Instagram, it's easy to get desensitized to not only the amount of time you spend there, but also how it's actually making you feel. When they log on, they realize it actually doesn't make them feel great. I think this is especially true for teenage girls, and I think this is especially true for us grown-up girls as well. So why have it dangling in front of their faces and our faces all of the time? What about games? That brings me to our next device. Tablets are for games, at our house at least. We have an iPad. One iPad. It's got a passcode on it that only my husband and I have. We've all decided that the iPad is for games. No movies, no Netflix, no YouTube. The iPad is just for games that are apps. All that stuff that was on their phones to the iPad. Let me tell you the best part about this one. You may once again think that my kids would be asking me to use the iPad all day, but they're not. Out of sight, out of mind applies at our house. Your kids, especially your younger ones, might be way more into their tablet than my kids are. I get that. Assign your tablet a purpose and a time limit. You can set those limits with third-party apps so they are easy to automatically police. Or you can do that like we do at our house and password protect the tablet and be the one keeping track of the time. It's what's easiest for you and what works for your family. Again, just notice a few things. We've blocked movies and entertainment here, especially YouTube, where videos auto-load and continue to auto-load eternally, and you have no idea what's up next. So the entertainment's gone from there. So where have we put the entertainment? I think this is an obvious one. You know where we're going next. The TV. The TV is for entertainment. We've got one TV. On purpose. Forever. This is where Netflix and Hulu, cable, and all that stuff live. We don't use our TV as a phone. We don't use our TV to browse the internet. We don't have our TV connected to a smart home device like Alexa. We just use the TV for TV shows and movies. And we wouldn't even have cable except for the English Premier League demands it of us. We all have our vices. (laughs) The TV is an open space in our home, so there's transparency there. And parental controls and restrictions on inappropriate content. So I've got the guardrails up. I don't want this to be something that I have to babysit a bunch. Now, I also want you to realize this is about constructing an environment where it's easier to build productive habits. We also have a pretty relaxed parenting style. Some of you may think this all sounds intense and controlling, but we definitely counterbalance. So we'll throw on Saturday Night Live with our teenagers or watch the movies they want to watch, but we'll do it together. Or, you know, if it's a show that we've seen, we're fine if they go watch it with their friends. But with my youngest, you know, we're not going to do that. Know your kids' personalities. Encourage their interests. Again, like the English Premier League thing. I actually, that comes from the video games. (laughs) But just create an environment that doesn't tether them in place. If we're using TVs as entertainment, guess what's not for entertainment at our house? Computers. We've decided that computers are for our jobs, for homework, a resource to search for information, for online shopping. I mean, we're not savages, guys. We have to use our Amazon Prime membership. So we've got two desktop computers. One's for my work and one is for the kids. My husband and I, and when I say one is for the kids, it's for their homework and it's set up to do that. So my husband and I each have a laptop. His is strictly for work. I'll occasionally let my kids borrow my laptop for homework if uh, the other computer is taken. 
So if they want to visit YouTube, they've got a funny viral video they need to see or show their friends or show me, they can do that there on the kid's desktop computer, again, out in the open, but somewhere where I can see, okay, what's loading next? Where's it going? And again, parental safety restrictions are put on our computers so that the environment there is as safe as we can make it. All right, the next device in our home is video games. Pretty straightforward. We just use our gaming console to play video games. We don't use it to browse the internet, to call friends. We don't network it with other devices in our house. It's mainly just to play FIFA, Minecraft, and some Lego games. Again, know your kids. Who needs what limits? What problems need to be addressed? If your kids are spending more time with their friends digitally on games like Fortnite than they're spending with them in real life, that might need to be something we all look at. We don't use our video game console to hang out with friends. We hang out with our friends in real life so we can actually high five each other and do those crazy Fortnite dances together. Now, if you've got excess devices, get rid of them. Buy them back from your kids, sell them, recycle them, simplify. Set the environment that reinforces the habits you want your kids to have. It's the equivalent of setting out fruits and vegetables instead of cookies and chips, right? Does every kid need a tablet? Probably not. We have one. You may have more than that right now, but the whole point is to scale back, to change our habits, to not have everything so accessible, so in our face all the time. Do you need five TVs in your house? Probably not. Unless your goal is to set up an environment where every direction your child turns, they see a screen or a distraction. So what did I miss? If you've got other devices and distractions at your house, add them to the list. Decide what's essential, assign them a purpose, make them work for you. Again, technology should make our lives easier. Let's stop letting our technology take from us. It can take our time, our attention, our emotions. Let's reset our relationship with technology. So this was a quick and easy one. That's all for now, but you have some serious homework. You've got lists to make. You've got devices to collect. You've got some deep conversations to have with your family. But be sure to tune in for Screen Time Part 3, where we'll dive a bit more into developing emotional intelligence by asking why. That's rule number three. Always ask why. Thanks for listening. We've been working on an ebook series complete with conversation starters, worksheets, and printables to help your family reset their relationship with technology. We want to hook you up, and we want your feedback too. So we'll be sending each of our subscribers a copy of our ebook, Tech Reset, for free before we release it to the rest of the world. Not subscribed yet? Just go to todaysmama.com slash podcast and click on subscribe. You'll get updates when new episodes of the podcast go live. You'll automatically be entered to win any contest we ever host. And, of course, you'll get a copy of Tech Reset for free. It's a seven-book series that will be on sale to non-subscribers for $59.99. So be the cool kid and subscribe. Go to todaysmama.com slash podcast. You've been listening to the Today's Mama podcast with Rachel Hersher. To find out more, go to todaysmama.com. That's todaysmama.com. Today's Mama, connecting moms and families with the best of today. Today's Mama.